We all know what a musical phrase is. We see them beautifully engraved with long flowing lines in 19th and 20th century editions. But what about the early music phrase? What's that like? Since early music is rhetorical, musical phrasing will correspond to the structure of the words. Around the year 1600, writing is very often constructed in long sentences, which are broken up into a number of shorter clauses. So at the beginning of Act One of Monteverdi's Orfeo, on this happy and fortunate day, which has put an end to the amorous suffering of our semi-god. Let's sing, shepherds, in such sweet accents that we'll honour Orfeo with our music. And all that one long sentence is in a certain way one phrase and in another way is broken up into many short phrases. In questo lieto e fortunato giorno, caposto fine alle amorosi affanni di nostro semideo, cantiam, pastori, in si soavi accenti, che si degni d'Orfeo nostri concenti. So perhaps our modern word phrase isn't so useful in early music, and we rather need the idea of the very long sentence and the shorter clauses, or, as Carl Philipp Emanuel Bach calls them, musical ideas. So we immediately see one of the consequences of thinking about an early music phrase, which is that we're going to breathe many times rhetorically in the middle of the phrase. But what about at the smaller level? What about this beautiful, long, flowing line that we associate with the 19th and 20th century phrase? Well, early music is based on words. And so if we look at the structure of simple Italian words, words that we know from music like piano, forte, dolce, arpa, or words that we know from the menu, like pizza, pasta, dolce, again. All of these simple two-syllable words share the same structure. They've got the accent on the first syllable. Or, to use the terms of the time, those words go good, bad, accented, unaccented, good, bad. Piano, forte, dolce, pizza, pasta. So, an early music phrase is typically going to alternate, more or less, good and bad. Like a string of Italian words. It won't necessarily be a strict alternation, it might vary a little. For example, if we take that most famous line of English poetry, to be or not to be, that's the question. Bad, good, bad, good, bad, good, good, bad, good, bad. It's more or less an alternation. And amongst all these good syllables, or in the music, good notes, some will be more important than others. And again, thinking about rhetoric, and words gives us a clue as which will be the most important. If we think of a line of poetry, what is called in poetical analysis the principal accent comes at the end of the line where the rhyme would be if it's rhyming poetry. Amarilli mia bella. And so we expect normally to find the principal accent towards the end of the line. To be or not to be, that's the question. But usually it won't be the very last syllable. 
usually it will be just before the end so that the phrase will end with a bad syllable. To be or not to be, that's the question. We end with this little stjun, a bad syllable. And so now we have the shape of an early music phrase, a very long sentence broken into shorter clauses, plenty of opportunities to breathe, especially to breathe rhetorically, and within each clause more or less alternating good and bad syllables with the most important accent towards the ending.